In the last few episodes of this weekly series, we've built up this cool effect of a spark gap transformer, or Jacob's Ladder. We've got an automated animation that cycles and produces slightly different results each time. All that remains now is to make that spark actually emit light into the scene. And as you may know, there are a couple of ways of doing this. One is to use emission on a material shader. But that's not actually the best way. It's usually pretty grainy. And we have an option instead to use an Arnold light in mesh light mode. So that's what we will explore today. I'll stop the animation, rewind back to frame one. And I want to hide these control objects and reveal the room. So let's go into the Layer Explorer. And just hide the Dummy Helpers layer. Open up the default layer and enable visibility for the room. We can close the Layer Explorer. This scene already has a single Arnold light and exposure control is already set up. We can detour into that really quickly, go to the rendering menu to exposure control. And I've got an exposure value of six and I've got a custom color temperature of 4,800 degrees Kelvin and a linear response to the tone mapping curve. Let's do an active shade render of this. Click on active shade on the main toolbar. And it looks pretty dim, but once we add the light from the spark, this will be properly exposed. For now, so that we can see a little bit better, we can reduce the exposure value down to a value of two. We need a material on the spark object itself. So let's open up the material editor from the main toolbar. We could use a standard surface, but it'll just be easier to use an Arnold matte material. That's found in materials, Arnold, surface, Mat. Drag that over into the view and double click it. Rename it Spark. In its parameters, change the color to white. Just drag the value slider up to one. Now let's assign it to the Spark object. So select the Spark in the viewport. I've got a lot of windows open here, so let me minimize these. Select the Spark object. And then we can go back to Active Shade and back to the material editor. With the spark selected in the viewport and the matte material selected in the material editor, click assign material to selection. And as that continues to render, we can see that the spark is actually pure white. Okay, we can close the material editor and set the exposure back to six, which will stop down. And we can see that the spark is still very bright, even though the camera has been stopped down. Okay, we can close environment and effects, and let's create an Arnold light. Go to a four viewport layout. You can just click in the viewport and then use Alt W and create a new Arnold light. Go to the create panel, lights. From the pull down list, choose Arnold. Click the button labeled Arnold light. In the top view, create that Arnold light and then right click to exit creation. Go back to the modify panel, rename the light Spark Arnold Light. In its attributes or properties, we want to change the shape type. Instead of quad, we want mesh. Now we need to assign the mesh object. Click on the button labeled none and then click on the spark object in the perspective view. And now it's emitting a little bit of light. You can see that we've got a little splash of light down there. Scroll down in the parameters and turn off normalize energy. And when that's off, the amount of light will be determined by the surface area of the mesh. If we go through our timeline here to a different frame, we can see that it becomes brighter as that mesh object becomes larger. In fact, I can put it at the maximum extent of the spark by setting it to frame 40. Now that does look overexposed, but we're going to fix that with a decay filter. First, let's change up the color here. I'll set the color to Kelvin mode 
with a value of 3600 degrees Kelvin. And now that's a much more orange light. Now let's decay the light over distance by adding a modifier. And that is Arnold Decay Filter. In its attributes, enable Use Far Attenuation. And then we have Far Start and Far End. Set the Far End to 120. And the Far Start to 75. And now as we scrub through our timeline, we can see the exposure on various representative frames. Here's the rendered animation of the Spark Gap Transformer, or Jacob's Ladder. And that's how to illuminate a scene with a mesh object using Arnold.